the truth about Nintendo, how Starlink Battle for Alice was made. They made it with knowledge that they weren't necessarily going to have Fox in it. Makes sense because there's a non Nintendo version. But I want to go over a little bit of the backstory. It's now in store shelves. Okay, cool. Listen to a lot of interviews with Ubisoft. Would you feel me to try the demo? So this is great, this is great. And then they eventually made a deal. Ubisoft previously made a deal with Rabbids and Mario before they made the Starlink and Star Fox relationship. This is a quote from Ubisoft. I believe Rose from Ubisoft. I think it has always been. I think it has o has to always remain respectful. And you know, I think it's one where it always has to be driven by passionate creatives who have something that fits really well and really believe in it, rather than someone looking at a roadmap saying, "Okay, now's the time to do the next Nintendo thing. Let's schedule that in." And so for us. It was the fit. It, and so for us, it was that the fit was right, and didn't compromise in any way either brand, and in fact strengthened them together. I think it was the same case for Mario Rabbids, where David Solani, creative director of Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle, had such a pitch passionate pitch and such a clear vision of how he saw it and how he wanted these worlds to come together. So I think it will develop organically. That being said, those organic collaborations and those incredible mergings of minds, of teams and minds and brand can only be possible thanks to this long-standing trust and long-standing relationship where Ubisoft has always been a big supporter of Nintendo consoles from the Super Nintendo days across all platforms and, and so I think one of the really neat things about Ubisoft is in many ways it's still this family company and Yves Guillermo, Ubisoft CEO, is really builds these long term relationships where he can build this trust and he can have this really lasting relationship that makes things po like this possible. So for us on the development side, you know this dream come true, we had this chance for some, to do something like this. And when the opportunity presented itself, we poured everything we had into trying to make it a reality. It seems like a very professional response, very formal. Well, on the other hand, if you didn't have such a formal response, maybe they weren't making another Ubisoft Nintendo collaboration. Okay, cool ass. I picture it from Anna, La Anna Atla. Can't speak. Analytical perspective in the sense that okay news comes in that eager that Nintendo was eager to work with you guys. So were you in those like those initial meetings? Yeah, so I mean we had a lot of discussions back and forth, you know, through I would say intermediaries at both companies. It's more of a discussion of, okay, the team Nintendo is interested and they think it's a promising game on Switch. It's never a big open world game. Obviously Zelda has been a big success for them, I guess in Breath of the Wild. And so that was already exciting. We know 
we started talking about, okay, the team is really, really excited and passionate to pitch this potential collaboration, collaboration involving Star Fox. There's probably a lot of fans who want another Star Fox game. And so there was, from there, these discussions simmer for a long time. So we always thought maybe they'll be interested. Maybe this is something we can do. And we started right away because we were like, we're so excited by even them having this conversation with us, even though they haven't confirmed anything. And so we just started working. We started throwing concepts. We made a 3D printed R-Wing that had the proper connectors and toys in this so that you could take it apart and everything. Product placement, synergy, etc. Okay, cool. It's like, why did you... How the, how were they not upset that you made the R-Wing? Well, you know the amazing thing is that, according to, the, according to Ubisoft, well, you know the amazing thing is that it's kind of the strength of Ubisoft. Ubisoft almost runs each team like a bunch of entrepreneurial ventures. A lot of business talk. Each team really has his freedom to experiment and try things, go places, and take calculated risks. Drop on the incredible, such as a uh, copyright for one title, and drop on the incredible resources that Ubisoft Network has to offer. Not necessarily be constrained by needing to clear, get clearance up some crazy chain. So for us, you know, we have our partners in Paris. We work for for a company that talks a lot about creativity. It seems very formal. So for us, you know, we have our partners in Paris that we work so closely with, and we were like, hey, we are so passionate and excited. We think we can make this work. We're gonna go for it. We just start working, but we were a little cautious. We didn't want to dedicate all the resources to it. Then we got the invitation. Nope. That would suck if they made the game and they don't do it. But then, you know, you could prototype. Or you could make like a spin off that's not actually Star Fox. It could be a spiritual success of Star Fox. So, hey, do you guys want to come to Kyoto? Because, like, a week before we had to go to the meeting, they were like, we've got a slot. It's so in a week. It's on. And we were like, whoa, whoa, whoa okay. Fortunately, we had to start working before we were really confirmed anything. We scrambled together with this pitch of play and together. We had the 3D printed R ring. But we didn't have time to paper it properly. To like pro paint it. Because you know, you gotta do it. You gotta do it right, especially for Nintendo. And so the 3D printed plastic was like beige. It looked like kind of ugly. So so we spray painted it. So it's kind of neutral gray color. It's kind of a nice finish though. Go on talking about the color of the thing of the army. And it was just this crazy surprise to have the star whole Starbucks in there and we weren't expecting it all. Mr. Miro and yeah, it was pretty amazing. Kind of right. I remember them. It's like a NASA hospital visit from the year twenty fifty or something. No, this point. And uh that's pretty much the whole story behind Starlink, Battle for Atlas and its Nintendo collaboration. Or your thoughts in the comments below.